Welcome to the Bike North Oily Rag Podcast. And today we're talking with John Kilman, Bike North member who has a great story to tell about cycling without age. Now, what's that all about? Well, let's find out from John himself. Good morning, John. How are you? Good morning, Joe. I'm very well, thank you. So what is this cycling without age? Tell us all about it. Sure. Cycling without age is it's a global movement that was started about 10 years ago in Denmark, um, initially with the aim of giving cycle rides to people who were unable to ride themselves, whether it was due to age or frailty or disability. And it's developed into a way to give those people, as well as a ride, a chance to tell their own stories, to reconnect with their environment and their community, and also to just get out and feel the wind in their hair. The wind in your hair sounds really good. How has it come to Australia, and and what's the history there? Uh, It was brought to Australia originally by a combination of the Danish embassy in Australia and a Danish IT company who together brought a couple of trishaws into the country and then more after that. And basically, they were the seeds trishaws to start the movement up. They were allocated to a number of chapters that were just starting up at the time. This was about uh, 2017, I believe. And from those few initial trishaws, um, awareness of the movement grew, additional chapters started and began purchasing their own trishaws. And there are something like 15 to 20 chapters around Australia now. That's really great. Now, there's a few words I want to just explore and unpack there. One is trishaw. What is a yeah. trishaw? Uh, trishaw means many different things to many people, but essentially it's a three-wheeled bicycle. It is electric-assisted because you can imagine with three people on board, that's a fair bit of weight. And the design, the configuration of the trishaws we use at Cycling With That Age is that it has effectively a couch seat at the front, a uh, side-by-side couch for two people over the front wheels, and then behind that, the pilot sits over the back wheel and pedals and steers from there. So who's doing the effort? Uh, Mostly the pilot or the electric mode. So that configuration allows the pilot to be very close to the passengers, in other words, to be able to talk to them in a a normal conversational volume. And that's part of the reason why the movement has developed into one that is intentionally giving people, usually elderly people, a chance to recollect their own lives, particularly in places that they've known or lived in, and to tell their stories. So overall, what are the benefits of those people who you're taking on a tour, basically, uh, around the local areas? What are the benefits for them as they're participating in Cycling Without Age? There are benefits on a number of levels. First of all, the rides simply allow the residents to be outside in the fresh air, to feel the breeze, enjoy the nature and local gardens and their environment. And the experience of that is a lot more direct from a bike than it is from a car or a bus. Again, as I said, gives the opportunity for conversations for people with the pilot and with each other, and often other locals, passers-by. It helps to lift the mood of the passengers by breaking the sense of isolation and the sense of being shut away that uh, living almost entirely indoors in a care facility can give to some people. We gave rides late last year to some residents at a care home and for one of them it was the first time they'd been outside since the beginning of the COVID restrictions, some 18 months previously. Um, Another, it was the only time they'd been outside other than to be in an ambulance to go to hospital. So you can see there's a real need to to get outside to, to have a bit of a break. That's it's really powerful, John. So you're, you're telling me that people are getting out on the front two seats of the trishaw with a pilot and the motor electrics doing all the work, but it's the wind in their hair. It's getting out, having conversations, being with people. And I know that often on these rides, there's others on bikes who help out to make sure everyone's safe. So it's just a really good time of connecting those people who don't normally get outdoors to get outdoors. That's right. Fresh air and social connection probably sum up the two main benefits. There are a number of peer-reviewed academic studies now coming out over the last couple of years which are demonstrating those benefits, which is great to have some hard data on those. And they talk about reminiscences being prompted by seeing familiar places, uh, just being outdoors can elicit positive emotions. It gives uh, another way for family members to be with their loved ones. Often we will have a passenger and a family member on the trishaw together, so they get a chance to chat and catch up while they're outside. And just generally, you can tell from the smiles on the faces of the passengers when you come back or during the ride and when you come back, that it it gives them a lifting mood. uh, They're more positive, they're having fun, they're laughing, they're smiling. Um, And the care staff who know these people particularly well 
they remark about that as well. They talk about the residents who, who you know, keep talking about the ride for days afterwards. They start asking when the next ride is going to be. So it's clear both sort of at an anecdotal level but also at a research level that there are significant benefits. That's, that's really good, John. And when will the next ride be? But that leads me on to my next question is... You're talking about the word chapter. So what's a chapter all about except being something in a book? <laughs> yes. A chapter has an emphasis on a local group of people. So local residents who are acting as volunteers, locations in their own area, so locations they're familiar with, but also locations with which the residents of care facilities are familiar. Many people in care facilities are from the surrounding area, from the, the few suburbs around about that care home. And so often it gives them the chance to be out in an area that they've known through their lives or they grew up in and to recollect their lives from the early days. Um, so essentially a chapter is a, a local group of volunteer pilots, and I'll tell you about a pilot in a sec, um, who provide these regular trishore rides for residents at care facilities. Um, and also they are assisted and overseen by the care facility staff who know these passengers and their their particular needs. It's such a great organisation. I came across it with the legendary Adrian Boss, and we don't have much time yep. to talk about him, but we will put a link wherever this podcast go to a great interview with um, Adrian, who's a champion for cycling without age. Sure. Where does all the funding come from for running these great chapters? Trishaws can't be cheap, trailers, all those sorts of things. So how, how do groups and the chapters manage their, their funding? Essentially, funding comes from two sources. It comes from grants that might be either government, public grants or private or philanthropic donations. And it comes from donations from community organisations such as Rotary and the other community clubs and also from individuals, of course, and sometimes from the care homes and the family members of passengers. But on principle, the Cycling Without Age service is provided free of charge to all the passengers. So there is no expectation of payment. Now, I know that for growing this great organisation of chapters of Cycling Without Age, um, it isn't cheap, and we just talked about that there, and especially mm -hmm. getting those trishaws, and you would like to get a new trishaw in Northern Sydney for the Northern Sydney chapter that you're helping manage with um, Bike North support, and as well as support of many organisations. What sort of cost are we talking about there? The trishaws are custom built overseas and then imported. So they're not cheap, about $17,500 for a trishaw, and they're built very much deliberately and specifically designed for cycling with that age. So they're built with a, a very strong emphasis on comfort and safety uh, and fit for purpose for these sort of rides. So, yes, yeah, about 17500 currently for a trishaw. That's the, the main item that we have to purchase. We're also looking at purchasing a trailer to be able to transport the trishaw around between care homes and also to uh, ride locations. We are part way towards that, but at the moment we are, I'm a candidate in the Westfield Local Hero competition. And a a finalist, I'll say. You're a finalist. A finalist indeed, yes. yes. <laughs> and if we're successful in that competition, the grant from that would cover the cost of a trishore. It's a $20,000 grant or donation from Westfield. So if you're fortunate enough to win that, that will cover the cost of a trishore for us and go part the way towards providing a trailer as well, which would be a, just an enormous boost to our progress. That would be an enormous boost. And I understand that that Local Heroes Award is a popular contest. And so people can vote for you in trying to get the funding for this trishore. Is that correct? That's right. I'm one of three finalists for the Westfield Chatswood competition. There are competitions around each Westfield centre and we fall in the Chatswood uh, area. There will be links hopefully on this on this podcast and also on the Bike North website where people can follow those links and go through the Westfield voting page and hopefully choose me out of the three finalists for that competition. So if you're listening to this podcast... The most important thing you can do to support Cycling Without Age within Northern Sydney is to go to the links and vote for John Kelman so that we can actually help fund this trishaw for Cycling Without Age within Northern Sydney. John, any parting thoughts as we wrap up this Oily Rag podcast this morning? Well, firstly, thanks for your interest, Darren, and your support, and also for all those people listening. Thank you for your support for voting. Uh, and secondly, if you have any other aspects of cycling with age that you're interested in, if you are interested in becoming a volunteer pilot or providing financial support or anything like that, 
please get in touch with me, either through Darren, through the Bike North website. My contact detail is on the page there for Cycling Without Age. Well, John, thank you for your dedicated time and support for Cycling Without Age within Northern Sydney and for taking up the baton of that wonderful program and following those footsteps of the like of the great Adrian Boss and Charlene Broadley out in Parramatta, just making this happen more and more within Sydney, New South Wales and Australia. And thanks for being on the Bike North Oily Rag podcast. An absolute pleasure, Darren. Thank you very much. Have a great morning.